Hey everybody, welcome back to 1776 or Bust. Today, I just want to go over a pistol that I absolutely think is probably the best gun that you can buy. I think it, it outshines anybody else in its class of striker-fired polymer pistols. I think overall the ergonomics of the pistol, the shooting capabilities of the pistol. I think for me personally, this is the best, most superior gun that I've ever owned. I have no plans on ever selling it. This is going to be a keeper for the rest of my life. Now I've already done a review on this. Um, apparently it's a very popular pistol, but uh, this is a great gun, no doubt about it. But this is not the gun I'm talking about. Some might say it's a VP9. Now, of course, I'd like to show you I have a VP9, but I don't. I have a little cleaning brush. Um, the VP9 I did own at one time. I actually wound up selling it. Some people thought I was crazy for selling it, but I have to say that I was not as impressed with that pistol as, let's say, with the 320 or the gun I'm about to show you. Now, others may say it's got to be a Glock. Glock's been around forever. It's such a great polymer pistol, a great aftermarket support, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Well, it's not a Glock either, and I've, I've owned a 26, a 17, and a 19. Some might say, okay, then it's got to be the good old American-made M&P 9. Well, guess what? This has come a long way from where it was maybe just three years ago. Still not the best in its class. Still not my favorite, but it is pretty darn good. I'm not going to lie. So then it leaves the question, what is it? What is, in my opinion, the best polymer handgun on the market? Well... Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to my, that's right, Walther PPQ. Now, of course, there's probably 14 billion videos on YouTube uh, bragging about how great this gun is, why it's so great, what is so good about it, but I will tell you that I am not here to try to convince you to buy this, not here to try to argue with you about whether or not it's as good as a VP9, a SIG 320, a Glock 19, a uh, Smith & Wesson M&P. In my opinion, and just my humble opinion, to me, this is everything you want in a striker-fired polymer pistol. It's got a great trigger, great ergonomics, great sights. Uh, of course, when you you know put some aftermarket on there, um, just great functionality of the pistol itself. No issues at all. Extremely reliable, and it shoots better than the owner. That's for sure. At least in my case. Now. Some of you may disagree, some of you might agree, but just to go over a little bit about the pistol itself, just to give you some of the facts right off of Walther's website. The one you're seeing in front of you is a nine millimeter. Now, before we get crazy into this review, I will safety check, it is a loaded magazine. However, the gun is not loaded. I safety check them all the time before I start videos anyway, but it has been safety checked. Now, from the magazine, um, Unfortunately, I got two 10 round mags because again, New York state is a magazine uh, capacity state. So in other words, you can only go 10 rounds instead of your uh, standard 15. So with the Walther PPQ, you uh, can get these right out of the factory with two 15 round mags. This comes in the nine millimeter, which is this right here. It also comes in a 40 and now a 45 ACP. I have not decided if I'm gonna go and move up to a 40 in this. I'm contemplating whether I'm gonna buy another PPQ and sell my P99 or go maybe and get a Glock. I haven't really decided because again, I, I've been saying I feel a little Glockless lately. Um, overall, the coating of the, the slide is tenifer, so it's a black tenifer finish. It's very satiny looking. You can see there's a little bit of a shine on it, but it's not too overbearing. Um, so I think that's always a good quality, especially knowing that it's gonna hold its, um, hold its, its finish on there very well. So I like the idea of that. The trigger pull is weighed in at 5.6 pounds according to the website. Do I think it's 5.6 or a little bit lighter? I think it might be a little bit lighter than 5.6 trigger. I think maybe four, four and a half. Um, but again, I don't have one of those fancy little trigger measuring devices. Uh, of course, if anybody out there wants to you know, give me one, I'll be more than happy to take it. But uh, you know, I don't know if it's exactly 5.6. I would say it's close to five, maybe even a four and a half trigger pull. Uh, the capacity, again, I've already went over that. The overall length of the gun is 7.1 inches. The height is 5.3 inches. And the overall width is 1.3 inches. So again, it's not an extremely high bore axis. Some people say it is a higher bore axis than let's say a Glock, and that is true. It is definitely higher than a Glock, but it's not unmanageable. Recoil is not unmanageable at all in this because of that bore axis. Um, again, 
The width of it, I think, is a winner, especially if you want to carry this concealed because it is so slim. Um, you don't feel it on the love handles if you have them. So I think that's a good uh, part of this gun as well. The overall weight is 24 and a half ounces. So again, it is a very light handgun. Um, some would say that it's not light enough to carry daily, but again, with a good belt and a good holster, you shouldn't have those issues. And by the way, you should check out my uh, belt video about uh, the $30 gun belt. Great belt, love it. Now, this gun right here, um, the 320 and FDE, this weighs at 26 ounces. So if I'm able to carry this with no issues, I would be definitely having no issues carrying that as well. Overall, why do I think this is the best gun on the market? Like I said, the ergonomics of Walther, again, you can see you have a little hump back here. You can also switch these out to small, medium, and large. I tend to use the mediums and sometimes the small, depending on what the gun feels like in hand. Uh, this one has the medium on it, and I'm very, very happy with the comfort of the gun itself or the pistol in my hands. The Picatinny rail you see has one, two, and three notches over there, so you can fit uh, something on there, flashlight, laser, or something like that. You've also got a pretty large trigger guard, so if you're a gloved uh, user, you shouldn't have any problems you know, getting your finger in there as well. Um, you've got your slide release, which by the way, love it. It's ambidextrous, so it's on both sides, so this gun works uh, as well for a lefty as it does a righty. You can also switch out your mag release to the other side. Um, again, this did not replace the Classic. Classic is still available with the paddle release. Some people like that, some people don't. I don't really care about either one of those. Whichever one I could find would be the one that I would get if I still was looking for one of these at this point. Now, about the pistol itself, is this a gun that I would recommend for a beginner shooter? Probably not. The reason being is because of that trigger pull. While the trigger pull, in my opinion, is not an unsafe trigger, um, especially if you train on, you know, taking your gun in out of its holster and putting it back in and maintaining your finger off the trigger. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with carrying a gun like this. Yes, it's light. Yes, you have to think about a situation where your nerves might take over, but at the same time, you've got to get your mindset into the place where you know that that finger won't go on that trigger until it's ready to do so, you know, because even with a 12 pound trigger pull, in a situation high anxiety, that trigger can be pulled just as easy as this. So, you know, do I think it's an unsafe trigger? No, I don't. At the same time, would I recommend it for somebody who just got their license, who now wants to buy their first gun? I would not recommend it for somebody that uh, in that status. Why? Because I think it is a little bit too light. You might want to look at maybe, um, you know, a Glock 19, even the P99, which is double single. Uh, but something along those lines, I think would be a good way to start. Now, of course, when we look at the trigger, and I'll rack that slide, you can see that this trigger is extremely light. So you have a slight take up right about there, okay? And then all of a sudden, just a little bit more pressure, and that's it. So you can see that that trigger is quite light, but very, very nice when you're shooting. Now, of course, your take up, a little bit of take up, and then there's your reset. The reset is very light, and so is that trigger pull again. So the reset is great. The trigger pull, in my opinion, is fantastic. If every polymer striker fired pistol on the market would follow suit of the PPQ, we'd be living in a better world. Now, of course, who are the PPQ competitors? Again, I've already showed you one, which is this one right here, the 320, and also the H&K VP9. Now, do I think the PPQ is superior to both? Yes. Why? Um, just because I've had it longer and I've shot it more, but also because of the ergonomics, just because of that trigger also, and just the refinement of the gun. I mean, the quality of this gun is as good as an h &K, is as good as a Sig Sauer. So in my opinion, you can't go wrong with this. You don't have to pay $700 for a, an h &K, which is what they're running for in my local gun shop. Um, you don't have to pay... This one I got really cheap, so I can't, I can't complain about this one. But this one can run you anywhere from $550 to maybe $600, and then you can find these anywhere from $500, $550 around there. So I mean, if I was going to choose between the two, which one would I take? I would take the PPQ. But this is a very close second to, uh, to this one. Uh, I love this gun. I recommend this gun to anybody who has experience shooting and carrying a concealed weapon. Again, if you are concerned about the trigger being too light, well, then this may not be your cup of tea. You might want to look at something that has a little bit of a heavier trigger, aka the Glock, even maybe the SIG, because the SIG actually measures in at six pounds. So I don't think that's that bad of a trigger either. So overall, best pistol I own. Love it. Totally recommend it. Uh, tell me what you think. Share your ideas. Do you agree or disagree that this is the best polymer striker fired pistol on the market? And if not, which one do you think is? So as always, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and, as, and again, freedom is never free.